this simple auto crafter can do 99% of all recipes in Minecraft. Hello there, Ray here. With the introduction of crafters, I came up with a lot of different designs which fall into three different categories. One that works for recipes of one item type, ones that work with two different types of items, and this design that works for every single recipe. But it turns out that 99% of crafting recipes only use three different items. So if only my simple design here could do three different items, then you wouldn't have to use that big design to do them. So I added in a third hopper for this design here, moved the clock to underneath, and it actually works amazing, which is great for my farm everything series where I'm trying to make an automatic farm for everything in the game of Minecraft and I'm currently over 95% of the way to being complete. It can craft the majority of recipes in this default state here and it works in both the Java and Bedrock Edition. Let me show you how I can handle some of the hardest recipes. So right now I have it crafting Ender Crystals which is a great example because it uses three unique items and one of the items is used at its max capacity. The three different items are getting pushed in from three different hoppers around the outside and each of these hoppers are being read by a comparator to make sure that there's plenty of items being stored in these hoppers before they get pushed into being crafted. If any of the hoppers would run out of their items, then they're going to turn off here, which is then going to turn on the torches out here. The torch will stay on and it will keep this line powered. And this will lock a clock, which is sitting here in the bottom. Let's turn it back on again so we can watch the clock go. Four repeaters going in a circle, going over to this torch making a torch clock. And typically this repeater right here is powering this block, which is also powering this crafter. And that's what crafts a new set of items each time. It's important that we turn off the crafter before it would end up running out of items. Because let's say it ran out of some glass, then a different item would start filling in that slot, and then we can no longer craft our ender crystals. But not only is the system smart enough to turn off before it breaks, but it also runs at a constant speed so that it never crafts faster than the items can come in. Since we only have one hopper to push in each type of item, if a recipe is really heavy on one type of item, like glass, that means all seven of these glass have to come in from just one hopper. And that's why we have these repeaters here all on full delay. That way it gives enough time for all the glass to refill before it crafts another one. But if you're crafting something that doesn't have to push in as many items, you can adjust this clock here to make it craft faster while still giving it enough time to fill in all the slots so it never loses the initial recipe. But with recipes that use a lot of one type of item, having a slow clock is not good enough. You need to make sure that if your system runs out of one item, you also need the system to be smart enough to know not to craft something unless there's enough items in storage so that I can craft this one as well as fill it back up again for the next. So this is a good example here. You can see that we got 63 glass in this slot right here. Let's say we just happen to get one more glass coming in from our glass farm. And if we go ahead and check in here, the crafter recognized that a new glass came in and automatically tried to craft another ender crystal. Well, the problem is that one glass that we put in activated the system, but it only filled in one slot back up to 63, while the rest got depleted down to 62. And if this would continue each time one item comes in, item is briefly read by this comparator and it turns off the torch meaning that every time even one glass comes in it thinks it can craft a whole new set but what happens is it eventually runs out of one item and then you will lose your crafting recipe but i designed my system to be smart enough so this isn't a problem and that's why we have this little redstone dust over here as well as have this comparator in subtraction mode then all we have to do is make sure if we have a recipe that uses a lot of one item, we have that item put into this barrel over here that is on the same side as this redstone. With that extra bit of redstone, it has to have this hopper completely full before it will actually turn off this torch and restart the system. This is because when the hopper is full, it has a redstone signal of 15 being produced by this comparator going out into this block here. But when it gets a less amount of items, then it's no longer producing 15 redstone signal, but it's only doing 14. And comparators can actually do math where they will subtract the strength from this side from what they read behind them. So if they read 14 here and we happen to have 14 over here as well, 14 minus 14 means zero. Well, there's no power going into this block, meaning the torch will stay on. But if it reads a full hopper, it will read 15 minus the 14, meaning that there'll be a signal strength of one here, which is enough to turn off this torch. And for recipes that only use one of each item, you don't even need to have this piece in here. This is the important part of the video where I'm supposed to tell you something, but I forgot what it was. 
but not only can it work with three unique items, it can also work with two, like this auto TNT crafter. Since we're only using two ingredients, we don't even need the third torch, so we can just remove this one, which we're not using, and it will automatically detect the other two are full, and it will start crafting. But with recipes that use a multiple of two items, you can still also prevent it from losing the recipe with single items coming into the system, which would slowly deplete the sand here. And this is done just like the other side, where you can come in with some blocks and redstone, and then have a powered lever over here and have this in subtraction mode. Now this one won't activate until this one is completely full of sand, and that way you can guarantee to not lose your recipe within. Alternatively, you could just come in and actually use both hoppers to push in the sand and link up both of these to a single source and that way when the sand comes in, it has to fill up both sides before the whole system will start back up again. And all other two item recipes are a breeze, but it can even craft recipes that use unstacked items. What makes this difficult is that once the crafter crafts this dispenser up, this bow will be used up and an empty slot will be there, which could easily be filled with cobblestone or redstone before another bow is placed in. But the bow will actually come in first each and every time. This is because not only do I have a redstone torch on this side, which is locking this hopper, preventing the redstone from going in too soon, but I also have a redstone torch on this side, which is locking the cobble, preventing that from going in before the bow does. That's because these torches take a little while to turn off, giving time for the bow's hopper to push in first. But this recipe uses a lot of cobble, so it needs time for all that cobble to come back in. And because the hopper is often locked, it doesn't have enough time to do this. So it needs a bit more delay, and we can do this just by moving this redstone line over here, then adding in some more delay by putting in a full delay repeater right here. And then the second repeater facing in this direction on full delay as well. Now you can craft a dispenser while giving enough time to replenish all the cobble so it never loses the recipe. It can also do all single item type recipes. Just make sure to put the items on the same side that we have this comparator reading. And then we can go ahead and get rid of the extra torches which we're not using. And then it'll go ahead and automatically craft up the blocks. Notice that even though it can lose the initial crafting recipe, it doesn't actually break it when there's only one item type. As long as the clock doesn't try to craft an item early on, it won't accidentally craft like a nugget or a pressure plate. And then the clock will just end up trying to power it, nothing will happen, and then the next time it will be able to craft the complete item. And at any point you can come in here and remove extra slots and disable them, so you can craft a recipe smaller than 3x3. Where my previous two item auto crafter can do a little over 90% of all items, my new one can do 99%. So out of the roughly 828 recipes in the game, my small crafter could do all of them but seven. And that's recipes that take four items, like cake, piston, crossbow, the suspicious stew types, complex firework stars, and firework rockets, and the recipe that which uses the most unique items being the rabbit stew. You can build the entire thing just from this view here, or you can check out the world download and schematic in the description. Now see how I made a farm for everything from dragon's breath to beacons in this playlist here, or say hello to me over at my live stream as I'm probably designing some more crazy stuff. And thank you to everyone who remembers to use their Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime to subscribe to me over at Twitch each and every month. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye!